Hello friends, welcome to yet another intriguing edition of Rahul's Advanced Biology. Today I'll be dealing with a very ecstatic topic known as the coronavirus, the ACE and ARB dilemma. So first of all, I would like to inform you that the WHO has already declared the COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 as a global pandemic. More than 8,000 people have lost their lives, more than 2 lakh have been affected by it. Now how to curb it? In my previous video, I have explained to you the specific virological details of the coronavirus and the outbreak status and how it was not genetically engineered and how convergent evolution and natural selection led to the formation of the novel coronavirus 2019 also as the SARS-CoV-2. Now, in this very video, there was a study in Lancet which hypothesized that the ACE, the angiotensin receptor enzyme inhibitors or blockers and the angiotensin receptor blockers or angiotensin 2 receptor antagonists if taken by the hypertensive patients leads to the upregulation of H2 which would then make you more susceptible to the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Is it true? And if it is true, would you like to seize these drug combinations if you are on it like lisinopril, inarapril and ARBs like the Sartan family? or Sartan, Candesat and Valsat and tell me Sartan. Would you like to seize it? And then would you like to wait till the coronavirus outbreak goes away? And then would you like to restart and in the meantime would you like to switch your drug regimen to calcium channel blockers or beta blockers or alpha blockers for the management of your hypertension or your aldosterone blockers or you can start with your diuretics and all. Would you like to do that? Now first of all let me get down to business and I'll resolve all your queries about this specific problem. In order to first comprehend this dilemma we should be able to comprehend something known as the RAS pathway, renin angiotensin aldosterone system pathway. RAS pathway, it, it starts, it commences with the formation of pre-pro-renin, then it gets converted into pro-renin. Pro-renin has got specific pathways, two pathways, once pro-renin can bind with the pro-renin receptor, right? And renin is produced from where? It is produced from the juxtaglomerular apparatus in the nephrons of our kidney. Each kidney has 1.25 million nephrons. Now, after binding to the PRR, pro-renin receptor, the pro-renin gets converted into renin and it also activates the receptor and initiates the MAP kinase pathway which has not been discussed in this video. I can discuss that in the later videos. Now, once renin is completely produced, it belongs to a specific protease, right? it will be breaking down your angiotensinogen. Now angiotensinogen is, is produced by liver. Now angiotensinogen, after cleavage by a specific renin, angiotensinogen is of 455 amino acids and 33 amino acids is the signal peptide which lets it go through the endoplasmic reticulum. You need a specific signal peptides. So what it does it, it cleaves out 10 amino acid residue and forms angiotensin 1. Angiotensinogen AGT becomes angiotensin 1, which is of 10 amino acids. Plus, you have a des angiotensin, which is of what is the use of des angiotensinogen? Nobody has been able to comprehend it, or nobody, the science, the scientists are not able to decipher the use because it's a big fragment, about 455 amino acids. This is only a 10 amino acid fragment, but its use has not been deciphered till date. Now this AT1 gets converted into AT2, angiotensin 2, by angiotensin converting enzyme isotype 1. And this angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor. It's of 8 amino acids in length. And then it goes on, you can see it goes on to the adrenal cortex, the zona glomerulosa, and causes the release of a mineralocorticoid known as the aldosterone, which is a mineralocorticoid. Aldosterone is responsible for increase in the sodium, means it will stimulate the sodium reabsorption, right? That will lead to increase in the blood volume via increase in the water reabsorption too, via osmosis, which will lead to increase in hypertension or BP, right? Increase in sodium concentration leads to increase in water reabsorption via osmosis. That is hypernatrinemia. Then it will lead to hyper, hypokalemia, it will lead to excessive potassium excretion via urine. Now these things we don't want, that's why angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor also. It binds to AT1 and AT2 receptors, there are two types of angiotensin receptors mainly, AT1 and AT2. Mostly AT1 predominates in the endothelium and the heart region, right? Now, angiotensin 2 is converted into angiotensin 3 
which is a let, less potent vasoconstrictor via aminopeptidase A. Angiotensin 3 is converted into angiotensin 4 via again a protease known as the aminopeptidase N. And angiotensin 4 is of 6 amino acids, means one amino acid each is cleaved from angiotensin 2 to form angiotensin 3, then angiotensin, then angiotensin 4. Angiotensin 4 is able to cross the blood brain barrier and in the right brain and right mouse and the mice brain model, it has been seen that angiotensin 4 is present, right? Now, angiotensin belongs to the serpent family, which are the serine protease inhibitors family, right? Now, this proranin can go the other route also. Proranin, instead of binding with the PRR, can go down the cathepsin route also. Cathepsin biochemical pathway. Cathepsin has specific lysosomal serine proteases. Now, cathepsin B, a specific cathepsin, can convert proranin to renin without the need of its attachment to the proranin receptor. Now, angiotensinogen. Angiotensinogen can be converted to angiotensin 1 via cathepsin D without the need of renin. It's a specifically separate pathway. Angiotensin 1 can be converted to angiotensin 2 by the enzymatic cleavage serine protease activity of cathepsin G or cathepsin G can also directly convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 2. It can do both the jobs. Since it is bypassing ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme requirement and it is bypassing renin. Both the requirements it can bypass. Right? And form again the potent vasoconstrictor known as angiotensin 2. Now, angiotensin 1 can be converted or cleaved to ang ang 19 This one amino acid it will lose, it will be a nonapeptide ang 19 by the enzymatic conversion done by a specific protease known as angiotensin converting enzyme isotype 2 which differs from isotype 1 right now H2 also what it does is it can cleave one amino acid from angiotensin 2 the most potent vasoconstrictor here in the whiteboard and convert it to ang17 it's a hexapeptide the affinity for this reaction, conversion of angiotensin 2 to ANG127 hexapeptide is 5000 times more than the affinity of formation of ANG19 or nonapeptide. Angiotensin 17 is a potent vasodilator. Right? It's extremely necessary for the vasodilation. And H2 and H1, they both belong to the family of dipeptidyl peptidase. And specifically, H2 is a monocarboxy peptidase, means from, from the carboxyl terminal end, one amino acid per, per event or per catalyzing reaction it will cleave off. And H2 is not only a carboxy peptidase, it not only cleaves or acts on angiotensin 2, it also acts on apelin 3 neuropeptides in the activation of apelin 3 via its carboxy peptidase, activity, activation of neurotensin, then activity of this arginine bradykinin but it doesn't activate bradykinin it all it only activates this arginine bradykinin and i have also reiterated that it's a potent vasoconstrictor and needed by our human body the biological system so this is the conceptual progress you need you needed to attain in order to comprehend this ras pathway now coming to the dilemma h2 in an april ARBC Sartan family, Rapid family and the Sartan family. They both are used extensively for the management of hypertension, right? And they are both pretty safe in their safety profile also. And they have tremendous pharmacological and pharmacodynamic profiling too. Now, H2, ARB, I am only taken here some studies which have dealt with angiotensin type 1 receptor because that is the most predominant receptor in the endothelium and heart, right? So, let's get down to business. ARB. Now, angiotensin 1 receptor has been found to be associated with H2 via molecular docking in the plasma membrane. Right? Now, after this docking, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, this causes the COVID-19 disease, cannot attach to H2. In my previous video, I have explained to you that the SARS-CoV-2 has a specific 
S domain spike protein which gets cleaved by the same protease 2 when the TMPR is H2 which belongs to the PCSK or the furin family super family and then the S1 domain produced by that that is the ectodomain it attaches with the H2 right and it is needed for the viral egress now the H domain cannot really attach with H2 properly because some of it is already attached with the angiotensin type 1 receptor. So SARS-CoV-2 cannot really bind. Now, if angiotensin 2 level is high in the body, if, if, if you are a hypertensive patient, so if you are a hypertensive patient, angiotensin 2 level would be upregulated in your system and angiotensin 2 can bind, it will bind with the predominant angiotensin receptor known as the AT angiotensin type 1 receptor. After it binds to this receptor, what happens is it causes the dissociation of this docking and then via signaling cascade pathway you will be having the ubiquitination via the ubiquitin ligase enzyme, the U here, and which will lead it to the lysosomal ubiquitination, the, de the degradation of H2 in the lysosomes. Again in this case the SARS-CoV-2 cannot really bind. In case there have been many studies, one study was published in a peer-reviewed Lancet Journal and in that study, there was a hypothesis that if you are taking AS inhibitors or ARBs, the upregulation happens of H2, means the AS2 gets upregulated and if H2 is more in the body, you are more likely to be vulnerable to be susceptible to be prone to the effects of the SARS-CoV-2. Now, is it true? It was just a hypothesis. There has been, I'm reiterating, it was just a hypothesis which was, which was published in the Lancet Journal, which has not been substantiated by any evidence-based study till date. And then the American Heart Association has completely declared that you can take ACE and ARB. So you can continue with your treatment if you are taking ACE and ARB in case you are hypertensive. There is no need to panic. There is no need to switch drugs. So do not switch drugs because SARS-CoV-2 may not kill you if you, switch, if, if you switch drugs, you may have a cardiovascular event. So do not do that. Kindly don't go for switching drugs. Now, as per various other studies that I have referred to, if I am administering a specific angiotensin 2 receptor antagonist or ARB, angiotensin 2 receptor blocker, like Losartan, Valsartan, Candesartan, Olmesartan or Telmisartan, specifically the study looked at Losartan, then the angiotensin 2 receptor blocker Losartan here would bind like this way only, but it would inhibit this specific pathway. But what it would do it, do is it would stabilize the connection between the A's and AT1 receptor. Once the connection is stabilized, then again also I told you that this specific SARS-CoV-2 virus cannot bind. So there is no need to panic as per the biochemical pathway. It's very unlikely that A H2 will directly dissociate and will stay here only. And then the docking would take place and you would be susceptible to the SARS-CoV-2. In my perspective, you wouldn't be more susceptible, you would be less susceptible if you are taking the ARBs or angiotensin 2 receptor blockers, right? Because in case if you are taking ACEs also, ACEs will prevent this formation angiotensin 2. If angiotensin 2 is less in the body, it wouldn't dock here and still the AT1R and H2 would be docked. Again, it would lead to the inhibition of the SARS-CoV-2 binding. So you are pretty safe from this perspective so kindly do not pay heed to that Lancet hypothesis right and follow the guidelines of the American Heart Association AHA if H2 is blocked if some drug is produced if you directly block the H2 can you protect yourself against SARS-CoV-2 yes but if H2 is blocked then you will be more prone to hypertension and if you are hypertensive then it's a then you, you can call it an end game because it's a vasodilator if H2 has been in various studies, if H2 has been dropped, it's been downregulated. Vascular permeability has been increased. It has seen that vascular permeability enhances or increases. That's a pretty bad state. It can cause Na plus to be retained, right, in an indirect fashion. And in some cases, right, it can also lead to ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is equivalent to the thing which SARS-CoV-2 
induces in the human system. In the end, you suffer from acute res respiratory distress syndrome known as the ARDS. And along with it, SARS-CoV-2 can directly inhibit or directly attach to the AH2 receptors in your kidney causing renal damage, renal failure. It could also cause sepsis. So kindly do not stop or do not switch your drug regimen. If you are on any ACE inhibitor or ARB, kindly stick to it. There's no need to panic. Now this was the conceptual progress that you needed to understand this lecture. I hope I helped you all out. If you like my video, then kindly hit the like button. If you like the content over here, kindly also visit my blog rahulsai.blogspot.com and also share it with your friends so that they can also be aware with all the happenings that are happening. And do not hesitate to post your queries in the comment section below. And kindly also hit the subscribe button in order to subscribe to my channel Rahul's Advanced Biology. Thanks a lot. See you soon.